I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 11th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. You'll notice that I'm doing a lot of videos here in the courtyard. I mentioned this the other day, but if you haven't seen all the videos, my foot has been bothering me a lot since I went dancing last weekend, and I'm doing my best, partially because I'm behind and partially because I don't want to be out walking around more than I need to be to stand in here and baby my foot a bit so I don't cause further damage to it. I think it's only soft tissue damage. It is feeling a little bit better at the time I'm doing this recording, but it comes and goes, so I don't know exactly exactly how bad it is. Today is Friday and most of the day, again, I was working. I've been very far behind on videos and everything else all week just because I was gone over the weekend. So I've been working to catch up because we have a lot of stuff going on and it's just, we're very busy. So it has been a lot of video and work. Work has been very busy as well, but good thing. So not a, not a complaint, just how things are. I'm hoping that the setup out here works really well. If you watch my short and how the sausage was made, I showed the setup that I'm currently using and I have not yet seen or heard how it works with the Tascam recorder on the chair. When I did the Tascam on the lower table previously, what I found was from time to time it was cutting out for some reason. Uh, it's like it was noise canceling itself or something of the sort. I'm hoping that that stops. We will see. Uh, but I'm testing different setups with the mics because I love how the Tascam sounds out here. But I got to make it sure that it provides usable results as well. So if you do hear it dip and get really quiet, that's the thing that we're looking for. It's a problem with the recorder as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know if it's hearing something loud and bringing down its overall volume because of background noise or something of that nature, or I'm speaking at different volumes and it's adjusting, but it does have some automatic adjustments and that may be playing a part. So something I'm researching, trying to figure out, but I can't record these over and over again to find out. So we're just kind of learning as we go. And we're recording on the Olympus, which you saw on that short. All right. So that's really it. This evening we went out for uh, Italian at Il Capriccio, which is always awesome. We took the whole gang, everyone went out, uh, Paul and Dominica and Ellen and Anna and Marcella and myself and everybody, uh, and brought food back for the kids and had a nice evening, mostly chill. Tomorrow I'm gonna be on the beach all day. I'm actually kind of working, doing uh, some relocation assistance stuff. So that'll be a lot of fun because I don't get to do that that often, although I'm getting a lot of requests for it. And we're gonna start talking about that pretty soon. We're putting together a price list and a services list list. Um, not real estate agentry, not a thing that we'll be doing, but we're going to try to uh, put together a package to help those who are interested with relocation, whether it's showing you around Nicaragua, helping you decide on cities, uh, looking for um, lawyers and accountants or whatever is needed. Uh, there's a lot of just consulting that's needed to be done on an individual basis, and we're going to offer some of those services. So that's going to be coming up soon. We're just working on it in the background. Nothing to announce right now. Before I go into today's topic, which is comparing San Juan del Sur and the Northern Beaches because, well, we're gonna get into that, but that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Before we do that, please remember to take a moment, like and subscribe. If you haven't done that, share on social media with your friends or with your enemies, whoever, uh, if you have not done that. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, down below, I put a link in the description to buy me a coffee. I often forget it. And so if you're one of the early ones watching, it's not there. And then my father or someone else complains, hey, I can't find the link that I put it in. It's a long story. I'm gonna attempt to have it on the video now because people have been asking for that saying, because on some media, you don't find it down there. And of course, ask your questions and leave your comments down in the, the community area. We get great discussion here. Um, on the community and um, especially something like this. I know a lot of you are looking at beach locations and tons of people are looking at San Juan del Sur or just assume they have to go to San Juan del Sur. So that's a great way to ask your specific questions. I'm gonna do my best to cover the topic, but there's always gonna be stuff that I don't cover that's gonna, you're gonna say, well, what about this? Or I thought this, or this is what I found. What do you think? So do those things. Let's get to today's topic. So a lot of people when they're coming, most people, almost everyone, when you're coming to Nicaragua, say, well, I'm going to San Juan del Sur. And there's this really strong pressure because all of the marketing to extranjeros, to foreigners from Nicaragua is done by businesses in San Juan del Sur. They cater, they are essentially an enclave. And so they have much more money than the rest of the country and a reason to focus on foreigners. The rest of the country, beach or otherwise, is primarily an inward facing economy. All of their economy is for other things in Nicaragua, but San Juan del Sur primarily makes its money from foreigners. So it puts all of its effort into marketing to foreigners, everything else markets to Nicaraguans. So San Juan del Sur becomes the face of Nicaragua to the rest of the world, but to Nicaraguans, see my video, the two Nicaraguas, 
isn't even really thought of as being a part of Nicaragua. Yes, we know it's inside the country, but it's an external enclave. It's a little piece of Costa Rica full of Americans and Canadians that is dangling out on the Southwest. For all intents and purposes, other than not having a hard border with the rest of the country, it's not part of the country. We don't think of it that way. It's at best a Florida to the rest of the United States, and that's at best. It's far more like a Puerto Rico. It is out there, it is separate, but you don't have to have a passport to get there technically. So it's important to remember that everything you see from the country is going to be about San Juan del Sur, yet most of the things we tell you that are good about Nicaragua mean Nicaragua, not San Juan del Sur. We don't mean a specific enclave. We mean the country in general, which is nothing like it. That doesn't make it bad. San Juan del Sur is awesome, and we're going to compare some of those things. But it's a completely different vibe, feel, economy, price, everything. When we talk about how cheap Nicaragua is, they don't count. When we talk about what the economy is doing, they're doing something different. In this case, worse. Generally, better. Um, when we talk about what houses are like, they have generally modern houses. Not always, but generally, whereas everyone where else generally has Nicaraguan houses and so forth. Okay, so some first key things. We're primarily going to compare San Juan del Sur, which is the major beach of the south state of Rivas, with Las Penitas and Ponaloya, the main beaches of the north in the Department of Leon. There are many beaches in both zones, but San Juan del Sur is such a large one, all of the beaches in the Rivas area are often considered to be satellites or near satellites of San Juan del Sur. You may find that some of them have surfing and San Juan does, does not, and that's something you care about, but the culture is generally related to San Juan del Sur, so it really should be called the Rivas beaches. In the north, you have lots of different departments that all have different beaches, but Las Penitas and Ponaloya are by far the largest, most active, and the only ones that are within a city metro area. We talked about that yesterday, so they're special and the most comparable. So yes, there's lots of beaches to consider. Don't limit yourself to just two, but when you're looking at zones and understanding major differences, this is gonna be a good comparison that's gonna make you understand why we see them so differently. So first of all, the village. San Juan del Sur is roughly 15,000 people in a full uh, two-dimensional, village, meaning you have a width and a depth to the village. You can live back from the beach, you can live along the beach, you can't live on the beach uh, because that is all reserved for restaurants uh, and a pronto, and in some cases is open. And that's a good thing about San Juan del Sur that you're not able to actually be on the sand. Some people will say, yes, you can be, and they're missing the point that you have to leave San Juan del Sur to do that. Yes, there are places in that zone where you can build directly on the sand. They are not San Juan del Sur. They may be near, they may be so close that it's confused with San Juan del Sur, but it's not actually San Juan del Sur. There's very little near San Juan del Sur that can do that, but there is the village directly north of San Juan del Sur, which is separated by the Rio Escondido. That village has a very tiny waterfront and does allow you to build on the beach under certain conditions. Yes. Um, but in San Juan del Sur proper, where all the things are, when, when all the things we're about to talk about, why you would like San Juan del Sur, does not necessarily refer to its outlying beaches. It refers to San Juan del Sur proper. San Juan del Sur proper has a large village, about 15,000 people. It's full of restaurants because it has a big economy, because it's primarily uh, a residence for extranjeros, for foreigners. So there's Americans, Canadians, Brits, and others who make up the majority of the spending in the village. So you have sushi restaurants, pizza restaurants, uh, all kinds of places along the waterfront. You have upper decks, you have lounges, all kinds of things. You have hostels and everything else. There's a lot of variety in and around uh, the village, and that's really nice. If you live in the village or really close to it, you can simply walk to everything. And when I spend time there, that's what I do. I never have to get in a taxi to go anywhere. It's about 18 to 20 total blocks, but there's a famous 16 blocks that are the core. Almost everything you want is in that zone. But it's important to note there are a few things that are not in that zone, such as a major grocery store. There are some major grocery stores outside of town, but you're going to want to take a taxi just like you would somewhere else. And if you want a full-size grocery store, you're heading to Rivas, which is like 45 minutes away. It's not a big deal, but be aware that when you want city resources, the city that you have is 45 minutes away, and it's a very small city. People do not go to Rivas for things generally. Right. If, you're, if you live in Rivas, you have to. But people from the rest of Nicaragua don't see Rivas as a destination to go get resources. Right. It's a small city in a small state. It's actually the, the lowest population zone of all the traditional zones of Nicaragua. The autonomous zones to the east in the jungle are less populated. They're not traditional Nicaragua. 
when you're looking at Las Penitas and Ponaloya, these beaches are much smaller and they are one-dimensional beaches, meaning they are simply a beach road and everyone lives along it. That makes it a lot harder to have village-like amenities. You have some restaurants, you have some hotels, but you don't have the density of them and you can't just walk to everything all that easily. Yes, you can walk the length of the beach, but it's a really long walk. It's a little bit absurd. So you're kind of stuck in just your half of the beach. Are you on the north half, the south half of your respective beach? There's like four or five subdivisions of the beaches, you're gonna tend to be in those zones and be limited to the restaurants and little shops that are in there. Because of that, they don't even have the super minis that you're gonna find in a San Juan del Sur. You're gonna have just pulperias, so very, very little corner stores. If you want anything, you've gotta go into the city, more or less. You do have restaurants, but the selection is much smaller than in San Juan del Sur. Uh, even all combined, if you put Ponaloy and Las Benitas together, that the total number of restaurants won't be that much lower, but the variety is practically non-existent. But what's different is their uh, associated city is not 45 minutes away and not tiny. It is as little as 20 minutes away and extremely large. The city of Leon, which is its city, is just 17 kilometers from the farther points of the beaches. Uh, it can be reached quite easily. And because it's a much larger city, it has a lot more resources than Rivas. So it is a hub for activity in the west of Nicaragua. Uh, and so it's a different vibe. With San Juan del Sur, you assume that you're going to be focusing the majority of your time on the village and almost never traveling to Rivas. And when you do, it's purely utilitarian. When you live in Las Benitas and Ponaloya, you assume that you're going to be using Leon all the time, and it's a big city with a lot of resources, so you're going to find a lot of your restaurants there. And there still is not that much variety. The entire city of Leon probably has little more, if more, variety than San Juan del Sur, but it roughly matches it. So you're going to have those restaurants, but spread out over a larger area. And Leon, while pretty walkable, it would be a bit much to walk around in the same way that you can in San Juan del Sur. So San Juan del Sur has a lot going for it, except for the fact that when you need to go beyond what they have, when you need to get a computer, when you need to go really grocery shopping, when you need to get something fixed, that's gonna be that long trip to Rivas. And if Rivas doesn't have it or doesn't have the good prices that you want, you're gonna be heading to Managua, it's gonna be several hours. In Leon, if you for some reason found something that Leon didn't have, then that trip to Managua is under an hour and a half. It is a different game completely. Uh, the um, San Juan del Sur has the culture of the enclave, like I was saying. It is almost all foreigners who live in that zone, and everything is focused on them. Even for the people who don't live there, the visitors to San Juan del Sur are nearly all backpackers. It's on the backpacking trail. It has the famous Sunday fun day. So when you're in the town, even if you live there, you often feel inundated by the number of university age kids from North America and Europe who are passing through and are just there for a little bit getting drunk and partying, which can be a lot of fun because if you like the nightlife, it has quite a bit on the beach. But if you want to go to something else and get away from the, the backpacker nightlife, then you're heading into Rivas again, and it's a very small city with very limited nightlife. It has some, but it's pretty limited. If you're in Las Penitas or Ponaloya, you have almost none of the backpackers. You do have some foreign tourists who to come through, but they tend not to be backpackers that often. They're more likely to be surfers, as it is a surf beach, but even that is not that much. You're more likely to get older travelers who are at least 25, not that much older, but older, uh, and are traveling in less of a backpacking way. They're actually heading to the beach for whatever reason. Uh, that makes it a completely different experience. Most of the people who are on the beach are actually Nicaraguense. The nightlife is pretty lean. There are places, there are multiple discotheques, one in each of the beaches at least. There are some late night bars that stay open, but the nightlife is generally pretty quiet, except for special events, which do happen with regularity. They're not that big. In all cases, there's gonna be live music from time to time. That's normal, but even uh, San Juan del Sur does not have it that often. What's different, again, is that if you want a busy nightlife, Leon has a much larger nightlife scene than San Juan del Sur, and again, it is not that far from the beach. So if you live on the beach, you can go into Leon and get to those really big clubs that are full of Nicaraguans rather than full of backpackers, and there's even a backpacking uh, district, sort of, it's a couple blocks in Leon. So if you're looking for that scene, while it's not as big as San Juan del Sur, it does exist, and so those options are still there. Granada, however, does not have any of that. It has the backpackers, but it has no nightlife uh, essentially whatsoever. None of the discotheques at night, none of the club scene. I don't know why something about its nature as a tourist city just has made that not happen. But San Juan and Leon do have big scenes for that. So if you're looking for the nightlife as part of your lifestyle, both of them can, can provide that, but in very different ways. Now, cost of living. 
This is a big deal. When we're talking about the cost of living in Nicaragua, Leon falls into a medium tier city, meaning that when we say average prices in Nicaragua, we're roughly referring to Leon because it's neither an expensive city like Managua or uh, Granada, nor is it a cheap city like uh, Hinotega uh, in the mountains, right? It just falls into the middle. It's kind of an average, making it very affordable, but not the absolute cheapest. If you just had to make your budget go as far as absolutely possible, yeah, it's not the best city for that, but it would get awfully close. Hinotega gets extremely far, uh, partially because you never need air conditioning and very rarely need a fan because their weather is just perfect. Uh, but Leon is extremely affordable and the beaches associated with it Las Bonitas and Ponaloya are also relatively affordable. Certainly the beaches always cost more than the cities. It's just the nature of things. But downtown Leon is gonna cost more than the beaches in many cases, so it's not a complete given. Um, but you have affordable things in both zones, you have expensive things in both zones. San Juan del Sur, however, is a completely different economic model than all the rest of the country. Most of the land, most of the property, most of the houses, most of the rentals, most of the food, especially in restaurants in San Juan del Sur, is literally double or more the cost than the rest of the country. Now, we talk all the time about a lot of misinformation comes out of San Juan del Sur, and this is true. If you're looking at things in San Juan del Sur, there's a really good chance that when you are doing so, uh, especially if you're looking from abroad, the information you're going to be being given is heavily inflated prices to make you think it's much more expensive than it is so that you can overpay and feel like you got a deal when actually you're still paying above market. That is very true. So be aware that when you're looking anywhere in Nicaragua, that your information from abroad is simply wrong. It just is. There's no need to ask. There's no situation where you're going to see something from abroad and it's going to be a realistic number. It will, if it's available to you abroad, it will always be to some degree inflated, maybe 10%, maybe a thousand percent. Both of those numbers are real, but something in country working with actual market prices, you're going to find that San Juan del Sur is roughly double that of say Las Benitas. That doesn't make it outrageously expensive because Las Benitas is very affordable, but it is a completely different economic model. The price of your house may not be the biggest deal because in Las Benitas, you would probably simply buy a bigger place and then in San Juan, you would buy a smaller one to accommodate the difference in the, in the pricing. But some things can't be adjusted in that way like your food. If you're going out to eat for dinner in Las Benitas, you may go out and spend $8. That same meal will cost you $16 for real in San Juan del Sur. That may still sound like a great deal to an American coming down. But if you come down and spend your life in a place like this, realizing that your money goes half as far is a big deal. Now, if you like the amenities, you like the enclave nature of San Juan del Sur, it easily justifies that price. It's still a huge cost savings over almost anywhere that you're going to be coming from. But when we talk about how affordable Nicaragua is, when we talk about how safe it is, when we talk about how the culture is, that does not refer to San Juan del Sur. It has a much higher crime rate, not a lot of violent crime, but petty crime is much higher. Income disparity is higher. Uh, the, um, uh, the housing costs are much higher and the food costs are much, much higher. It is, those are, are pretty big negatives that come with San Juan del Sur. And then travel costs to anywhere else in the country, generally a bit higher simply because you're really far away. You're basically on a peninsula out in the middle of nowhere. The one thing for travel that's really awesome about San Juan del Sur is that you are very close to the Costa Rican border. If you're someone who needs to do a border run or just someone who's going to be spending a lot of time in Costa Rica traveling overland by road, or you're someone who's gonna be using the Liberia airport on a regular basis, then being close to that border is a huge boon. You're less than an hour from the border. Sometimes it could be like 45 minutes. Minutes, whereas Leon, if we need to go to the Costa Rican border, is about four hours on the nose. So that's significant. However, we don't travel to Costa Rica that often. I don't know very many people who do, even those who live in San Juan del Sur typically only do it every six months. And so you may be looking at only a few hours every several months. However, we go to Managua every couple of weeks, and that can be several hours faster from here just for that. So it very unlikely that that border difference will make any will be an actual value add compared to the other losses from the same uh, aspect from the travel aspect if you're needing to go north obviously it flips being in san juan del sur takes you forever to get to an el salvador or a honduras whereas from leon we can be in honduras in under two hours so very different and 
the Honduran border to the El Salvadoran border is less than an hour, so we're less than three hours to El Salvador. That's a, that's a nice feature, but those are not border run countries for us. We are a very long way from a northern border run. That shifts a benefit to those who do border runs, not to those with residency, towards San Juan del Sur. And it's one of the reasons that people look there, simply because they think that that's going to be a more significant factor than I think it ends up being in real life. But for most people who are looking at Nicaragua, I think there's a really big decision that needs to be made. And is that, are you coming to Nicaragua because you've seen marketing from uh, San Juan del Sur and it projects a lifestyle that you're interested in very specifically? You want to be around other uh, uh, foreigners who are in Nicaragua and maybe isolating themselves to some degree. So yes, you'll be learning some Spanish. Yes, you'll be eating Nicaraguan food, but you'll also have access to a American or Canadian lifestyle. You'll be able to go out to dinner with lots of Americans and Canadians, speak English most of the time, and, and never need to fully adapt. I don't mean that people are trying to avoid adapting, but that full immersion into Nicaraguan lifestyle is not for everybody even people who really like the country. San Juan del Sur will service that extremely well. If that's what you're looking for, then probably San Juan del Sur and its higher price is going to make sense for you. If you're looking to be completely immersed in the Nicaraguan culture, you want to be really pressed to learn Spanish, not forced, but it'll be encouraged pretty heavily. If you want to really participate in Nicaraguan culture and you're happy to eat Nicaraguan food nearly all the time and see meeting with other uh, foreigners to be the exception, not the rule, uh, and a special event rather than the norm, then the rest of the country opens up to you and at incredibly low price. And for people on my channel specifically, there tends to be a, just because of the nature of what I do and what you guys watch, there's a really high aptitude towards enjoying that more. People who are watching most of the other popular channels from the country, those channels are produced in San Juan del Sur much of the time or uh, a good percentage of the time. And they're often showing lifestyles associated with San Juan del Sur because a lot of the people coming to Nicaragua, that's why they're coming. However, it is important to note, many of the people who come to Nicaragua come because those channels sold them on San Juan del Sur. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm simply saying that this is a cause and effect situation. Many people only learn about Nicaragua because of San Juan del Sur, because that is where the, the news of Nicaragua is getting out from, except for this channel and very few others. So if you first find those channels and discover that Nicaragua is a place of interest to you, you will have a certain propensity towards they funnel you into San Juan del Sur because that is where they have hotels to rent you. That's where they have real estate to sell. That's where they have restaurants paying them to get the word out. So you're going to look at those things and be like, that's what they're telling. They're, they're just acting like that's the only thing. And if you watch my channel, you're going to get the opposite effect that I'm telling you about all the Nicaragua that isn't San Juan del Sur. I'm naturally just assuming that's not where you're going. I'm assuming you're, you're looking for the lower cost. I assume you're looking for Nicaraguan culture and really getting into the Nicaraguan experience, not because one is good and one is bad, it's simply because that's what I do. And so if you come to my channel, you probably came for that reason. And if you come to those channels first, then you probably found it for those reasons, simply because something you were searching on or something led you to connect with me or them or whatever in that way. But there's going to be a lot of people who find my channel who are like, I want to research Nicaragua in general, who then say, oh, oh, I see there's lots of options, but San Juan del Sur is the one that makes sense for me. And that's for a lot of people. And then there's going to be a lot of people who find those other channels and say, wow, San Juan del Sur is really cool, but oh my gosh, I didn't realize there's all this other part of Nicaragua that I'm not normally being told about. If you come into, the, if you go to San Juan del Sur, very few people sit around talking about Leon. Some people will talk about Granada, but Managua, Leon, Chinandega, Matagalpa, Esteli, Hinotega, they almost might as well not exist. They're a different universe to them and very far away, so that makes sense. But you tend to get this enclave feeling of, well, these are the things that we do. These are the places that we talk about. This is what Nicaragua is to us. And it's a very insular, very isolated, very small enclave piece of the country. And the country is this big, vibrant place with lots of different cities, lots of different beaches, lots of opportunity for uh, living in, in mountains and beach and city and village and, and countryside and farming or whatever. And very little of that is San Juan del Sur. Um, and it's important to look broadly and of all things, because this is what happened. I was just talking to someone today that prompted this video, and she was first looking on the Caribbean coast. And it's natural if you aren't familiar with Nicaragua, the Caribbean coast sounds like it's going to be amazing because Caribbean, who doesn't want to live on the Caribbean? But the Nicaraguan Caribbean coast is a far away place. And it doesn't mean it's not for you. 
It is extremely different than the rest of Nicaragua. It is uh, two large autonomous zones with almost no people. It is an extremely poor region. They primarily speak Creole English. It will feel more like you are in Jamaica than in what you think of as Nicaragua. It is traditionally not part of Nicaragua. It is the Mosquito Coast. So it is different culturally. It is different economically. It is a different safety level. It is a different infrastructure level. It is part of the country. You are in Nicaragua. You get to take advantage of all the Nicaraguan uh, structure of things, but at arm's length and very far away. And in no way does it feel like you've come to Nicaragua. You can also, and so a lot of people look and say, well, Caribbean, it must be cool. And you might like it, but it's not what you're thinking. When you say Caribbean, it's not like that. And when you are then looking on the Pacific coast, everyone just goes to San Juan del Sur. And I get this a lot. It's not just this person who asked the question. Almost everyone I speak to, I say, well, where are you looking? San Juan del Sur. And, I'm, and I've made the same mistake in, in the past as well. And there's a lot of reasons when you research it that you'll be like, well, it's the biggest, it has the most. It's not just the biggest and the most. It is utterly different in every way. And so in the most part, I would say, yes, it's good to go to San Juan del Sur and consider it, consider all the factors. But if you were going to look at any one place or any one or two places, I would immediately rule out San Juan del Sur. It is the place I would not visit until I made a decision about Nicaragua based on the rest of it. And then if you can isolate San Juan del Sur and say now, OK, so I like Nicaragua. I'm happy with all the whatever, the cost of living, the availability of flights, the border runs, whatever. Is San Juan del Sur something for me to consider? Then once you know Nicaragua, go there and see if it offers something special for you. Don't go the other way around and make San Juan del Sur a default selection. It is the least likely of all of Nicaragua to be the place that you want. It is the, this is a tough one to describe. It is far more likely that people given insight into what the options are in Nicaragua, that they will choose San Juan del Sur. Of any individual place that you would choose, San Juan del Sur is the most likely, meaning when you, acute, when you add up, aggregate, Granada, Leon, Managua, the beaches, everything, the rest of Nicaragua should probably get 80 to 90% of the expats. But none of those locations will get the 10 to 15% that San Juan del Sur will get. So when we're looking at it in a two Nicaraguas way, yes, Nicaragua is much bigger than San Juan del Sur. But when we're looking at it in a San Juan del Sur versus Leon, San Juan del Sur versus Granada, San Juan del Sur versus Managua, San Juan del Sur is the major player on an individual basis. But because their marketing is the one thing that's getting out to most people, there is an everything, and this is, this is smart business for them, everything that they say and do is designed to give you the feeling that San Juan del Sur is simply the option. They make it feel like they're, they don't try to compare themselves with other things for good reason. Right. I think if you did a comparison, you would lose the majority of people. They'd say, oh, well, these other things are so much cheaper and safer and more, more uh, accessible to other things and so many more options. And my investment is so much more safe. Um, but it's also that th so they don't do that. Right. What they do is they present it as this is all there is. And this is what this is what Nicaragua means to you. And so people just jump to San Juan del Sur and say, I'm going to go to this really special case. And, and, and not look anywhere else. That's what they're trying to do is get you to not look anywhere else. And you'll never realize all the things you're giving up to choose San Juan del Sur, whereas you really should go there last. And then if you give all those things up, you're doing so with your eyes wide open and saying, well, but I'm getting these cool benefits and it's totally worth it for me because that's what makes sense for me. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.